Hey, my Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. I am happy to be here with you today. I know last week we talked about David and Goliath, and I'm actually going to go backwards a chapter today. I think it's one chapter. Give me a minute. Two chapters. Today's topic is when what seems like the right thing is actually the wrong thing. Or we could call it, is obedience better or sacrifice? So, in 1 Samuel 15, I'm actually like halfway through 2 Samuel now, but we'll talk about that in another video. Just, just a little background. Sometimes when I say that, I end up giving like way more background than I meant to. But, you know, for a long time, Israel did not have a king. They had judges, hence the book of Judges, which we talked about already. And they had prophets, or a mix of both, or people who were both. Now, Samuel was a prophet. He was actually the last judge slash prophet, meaning last person to fall into those categories before Israel had a king. And the first king that he anointed, Samuel, was Saul. Saul actually reminds me a little bit of Peter in the in the New Testament in that he was kind of hasty. Maybe that's not the that's not exactly the right uh, word. Impulsive, uh, impatient, <laughs> lots of words. Now, thankfully, gratefully, Peter was able to be redeemed in that situation, and Saul just went downhill. I feel like more and more quickly, despite multiple warnings, despite oh, just a lot, a lot. So we have this story where. In 1 Samuel 15, where Samuel says to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Okay, I know. <laughs> Some of you are like, okay, Brenna, I'm having trouble looking past that part right now to what the point of your story might be. And I, I'm almost positive I talked about last week how I heard someone say something very helpful that people who are Jewish, in this case it was a man a Jewish man who believes in Jesus as the Messiah, are able to hold different aspects of God's character in tension. Because people might read this and be like, how could a loving God ask them to do that? Well, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to the question. <laughs> My encouragement to you, though, because you're not God, and I'm not God, and we don't think like God, and we don't act like God, and we don't see the beginning and the end, and we don't see everything that contributed to God making this decree, to trust in God rather than parts that we don't understand, because this is not the point of my story, but I can't share it without sharing that part, okay? So let's continue on. So this isn't an exact quote, but I'm summarizing the story. So Saul got the men together, lots of men, <laughs> and went and attacked them. But he took the king alive, and he saved the best of the sheep and the cattle, the fatted calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely. Then the word of the Lord, verse 10, came to Samuel, I am grieved that I have made Saul king, but he has because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, and he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. He has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of sheep in my ear? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? And Saul tries to <laughs> deflect, kind of. We, we did almost everything. We spared those animals for God. That's what he says. It sounds really good, right? But then Samuel tells Saul what God said to Samuel the night before. 
Saul tries to defend himself, but I did obey the Lord. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder. The best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God at Gilgal. And then Samuel says, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Keith Green actually wrote a song called this, Obey is Better Than Sacrifice. Good song. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Hmm. Ouch. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. And then Saul tells the truth. <laughs> I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command in your instructions. I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them. I wrote in my journal when I read this, Samuel had not learned the lesson that obedience, not doing what seems right to you, is critical. And I say he had not learned the lesson because just two chapters previous, Samuel tells Saul to wait a week for him to come back. And after seven days, Saul decides Samuel is not coming back and does the burnt offering himself. Samuel arrives just at that moment and says, what have you done? This is verse 11, 1 Samuel 13. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, it's like, like a kid trying to give you all the excuses he can why he didn't obey. I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me and I have not sought the Lord's favor, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. You acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. So he already had an opportunity, in some ways a very similar situation, to recognize that obedience obedience is top priority literally both times over sacrifice right because in first samuel 13 he didn't wait for samuel to do the sacrifice and in first samuel 15 he saved the best of the 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 cattle and the sheep and all that to give a sacrifice even though that's not what he was told to do so again i wrote saul had not learned that obedience not doing what seems right to you is critical. And you know what? Saul messed up so many times that if I were Samuel, I might have just like, I am done with you. But it says, chapter 15, verse 35, until the day Samuel died, he did not go see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him. And the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. The lesson for me today and for us, sometimes we think things like, what can I do for the Lord? What can I give for the Lord? What can I give up for the Lord? Maybe I'm supposed to fast for the Lord. And we forget to obey him in the day to day. We forget that he didn't ask us to fast, but what he did ask us to do is to go out of our way to talk to our neighbor who's been going through a hard time, to obey is better than to sacrifice. What is that thing that God has asked you to do, even if it seems silly or inconsequential, that you need to obey him in, that area you need to obey him in? God, we don't want to be like Saul. And when things don't seem to be going how we want, or someone's not coming through for us how they said they would, we take matters into our own hands, hands and do what seems right in our own eyes. We want to walk in obedience to you, Jesus, in what seems right in your eyes. And so, God, we trust you to help us. We trust Holy Spirit, who is truth, to remind us of those areas where you've already spoken to us, but we haven't actually taken that step of obedience. 
We're looking for a sign everywhere about our situation, but we're not willing to do what you already told us to do half the time. So forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. And today, God, we commit to being obedient to you, Lord. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, my Coffee with Brenna friends. It's always great to hear from you. I love to hear back from you. So until next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.